In this video, you're gonna be building this, but not in the traditional sense. Creating UIs and dashboards have always been consuming tasks that required front-end development. Lately, there's been quite a big shift to creating these UIs and dashboards in Python using a framework called Streamlit. In this video, we are going to accomplish three things. One, we're gonna answer the question of what is Streamlit? Two, how Streamlit can benefit you. And then three, a complete demo and web product all using pure Python. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. So Streamlit is an open source Python library that makes it easy to build custom web applications for Python developers. The beauty of Streamlit is that it allows you to create functional, interactive apps using pure Python. No need for complicated front-end code. And with just a few lines of Python code, you can create interactive features like sliders and charts, be able to upload files and be able to do a whole bunch of things. And that's because Streamlit is designed to only require a few lines of code per widget, and it has easy integration into data visualization tools like Matplotlib and Pandas. What made me hear about Streamlit originally was about this data scientist, Sarah, who used Excel to generate reports and graphs for her company. Well, every few days, her company wanted a new report because there's just continuous data coming in. She would manually add files and have to adjust some of the Excel formulas to display these changes. The issue with all of this is Sarah isn't using Python. She can't use all the awesome libraries that the Python programming language has. So what she did was in just a few days, she was able to clone the entire Excel sheet into a Streamlit dashboard where she could use the API endpoints to auto collect data from her company and then use Python scripts to automatically adjust this data on her dashboard to create you know nice looking graphs and everything. I'm assuming this saved Sarah and her company a ton of time and money. So let's dive into this Streamlit tutorial to see how we can use it by going over demos and then build an actual web product. All right, so what we're gonna do here is just have on the right hand side a UI, a web page where Streamlit's gonna be rendering, and then our code over here. I already have a virtual environment running with a main.py file, and that is all. Now, the very first thing that we need to do is install Streamlit into your virtual environment or into your machine by doing a pip install Streamlit. This will download just about all the dependencies that you need. I'm also just going to go ahead and install matplotlib. This is just so we have all the dependencies to create graphs and stuff at the very end. So just install streamlit and matplotlib. All right, so now at the very top, just for us to kind of go over some of the widgets and some of the main inputs for streamlit, let's go ahead and type in import streamlit as ST. All right, and now the very first thing we can do is say ST title, and we're just gonna name it Streamlit Demos, and then ST write, welcome to the Streamlit Demos app. Now, all we have to do is say Streamlit run and then your Python page. So we can say Streamlit run main.py. And when you do this, it's going to start it on this port. It just created a whole new browser, but we can just refresh here. And we can see that it's just gonna print Streamlit demos as a title, and then as a new type of CSS, it's gonna say, welcome to the Streamlit demos app. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is kind of go over some widgets and interactivity. So right under here, let's go ahead and just say like st.header. And inside of here, we can say interactivity for widgets. And I'll just keep saving it. It's going to be checking automatically. Say so source code has been changed. If you refresh, it'll add the new thing. So interactivity with widgets. And now what we can do is we can add a name and then it can print the name once you press enter. So the input is waiting for some kind of action. So let's go ahead and say name equals st dot text input. And we'll just say enter your name. And then we can say st write, which we did above, but this time we're just gonna say hello and then we're gonna print the name. Now, if we come back over here, we can see into your name, I'm gonna say Eric, and when I press enter, it'll just fill in that blank. So again, it starts off empty, and then when you type in something, you press enter, it'll fill it in right here. Now, a number widget is what takes in a number, 
So instead of saying like text input, we can say number input. So we can switch that to number input. Here, we'll just change this to like age and we'll say enter your age. But then what we can do is add some data validation at the end. So we can say min value is zero, max value is 120. And then we can say we're going to start the normal value at 18 because we can say like the, that's like the age limit for our project. And then right here, we can say st write and we're going to say you are age years old. And right here, it's going to start off at 18. You can change it to a max of 120. But if you try and go over, it'll say, hey, you need to be less than or equal to 120. And it just changes that automatically, just like we did for um, the name above. Now, those are simple widgets to be able to type in text and numbers. We can add in sliders. So we can say slider equals st dot slider, select your level. And we can say the min value is equal to one, max value is 10, and value is five. Then we can do the same thing with st right, where our slider is a slider. If we save this and refresh, we can see that there's now going to be a slider and this changes dynamically, which is really cool. Now, adding a button in Streamlit is also very, very easy. We can do this by saying if st button say hello. Well, then we want to print something to the screen and the if is saying like, hey, if it's clicked. And we can just say, say hello, and then write hello, YouTube. So now for right here, it'll say, say hello, and you click it, it says, hello, YouTube, right underneath, just using the same right. So that's how you can dynamically create things on the spot using buttons. And then the last thing we're going to add here is a box widget. So it's going to be like a select box. So we can say option equals st dot select box, choose an option. I'm just going to say one, two, three. And then we can just write the selected option. And then right here is a drop down menu saying different numbers and it changes dynamically. All right, so this is looking pretty, pretty cool. Now, let's say we wanted to create a chart or have some way of printing data. Well, this is um, really easy in Streamlit and it's one of the main reasons people use Streamlit and it's due to the ease of being able to create graphs and tables and all that kind of stuff. So let's just create a new header by saying ST header displaying data and charts. And then we want um, some data. So we can just say data equals and then we want um, an object that holds two items. So we can say name it's going to be Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and then the ages are 25, 30, and 35. Then we can say df equals pd dot data frame, where we pass in data. And then we just want our st subheader to be sample data frame, and then we can just write off and do um, write off our df, and df stands for data frame. Now we're gonna get this little line right here and that's due to pandas. So let's come up to the top and say import pandas as PD and pandas comes automatically with streamlit. So after we do that and we save and we refresh, um, it's running. Sometimes it takes a little bit to run the very first time when you're creating um, dashboards with graphs and data. But if we just hang out for a second, it'll be complete. Awesome. Now, if we scroll down, we can see this little data frame, which is a table that displays the items and everything is auto configuration. So you can make any row or record bigger and smaller. Now, if we wanted to create like a data graph using matplotlib, which we installed, we can say st dot subheader and then just say, hey, we're going to call this matplotlib chart. And then we want a fig and an access equals plt dot subplots. 
and we're going to need to scroll up and import nummy as mp and then import matplotlib.pyplot as plt And then we can say x equals np dot length space zero ten and a hundred axis dot plot and we just pass in our x and np dot sign x which plots a sine wave. And then we want to say st dot ply plot fig which displays the mat um, plot lib figure, which displays the mat plot lib figure. Now if we refresh and we wait for this to finish running. And we scroll down, um, we can see a chart that kind of goes like this based on our matplotlib chart. And then the last thing I want to go over is layouts and organization here. So if we say st dot sub subheader with our columns and layouts, column one, column two equals our st dot columns two. And then with column one, st.write content for column one, and then with column two, st.write the content for column two. If we refresh this, we can see that there is going to be two separate columns. And here we can see the column layouts and we have them split 50-50. If we wanted to add tabs to this page, we can do this by saying st.subheader with our tabs layout and kind of following the same example as above, we can say tab one, tab two equals st.tabs where we need to pass in an array of tab one and tab two. And then we can say with tab one, we want just to write the content for tab one and then with tab two, write the content for tab two. And if we refresh this, we can now see that there's going to be two tabs where it says content for tab one and content for tab two. And then we can add an entire sidebar to the side of this by saying st.sidebar.title sidebar title slidebar option equals st.slidebar.select box where we can select an option of A, B, or C. And then st.sidebar.write and just say you selected blank side option. And that's literally all you need. And we now have our own sidebar right here on the left hand side where you can just kind of select and change the information dynamically. Now with all of this data, let's go ahead and just create a real life application using Streamlit. So what I'm going to do here is just delete all this demo code and I'm going to be using all of this data that we just went over and let's just go ahead and say ST title for our financial portfolio analysis tool. We need our input widget so we can say principal equals ST dot number input where we can say initial investment amount. with a min value of zero, value of a thousand, and step by 100. We can then say annual interest rate, where our ST number input is annual interest rate percent, where we say min value is zero, Value is five and step by point one. Years equals st dot number input where we can say number of years, min value is one, value is 10, step is one. We now need to calculate the investment growth over the years. So we can say interest rate equals annual interest rate divided by 100. 
time equals mp dot a range where we pass in one years plus one with an amount that's equal to principal times our one plus interest rate times time. Let's now go ahead and create a data frame and say data equals PD dot data frame with the year as time. And then our investment value is amount to that rounds to two. And then we can say ST dot subheader, subheader, which is our investment growth over time. ST dot data frame of our data. And now we just need to plot the information. So we can just say figure and axis equals PLT dot subplots. Where we say axis dot plot our data of our year. Data of investment value in marker of O. We then want to set the X label to year. We want to set the Y label to investment value. We then want to set the title to investment growth over time. Make the grid true. And let's go ahead and say st dot pi plot of our figure. All right, it might have been a small typo here somewhere. Oh, it's saying because is a integer up here. So let's go ahead and just change all these to floats. All right, let's see if that fixed the error. Yep. All right, so here we can see it all. So if you start with $1,000, you have a 5% interest rate, and we do this for 30 years, it's gonna automatically change everything. And we can see how much the investment value will be. It's gonna be another $4,321 at a 5% interest. So your $1,000 is actually gonna net you more money. And then we can kind of see the graph on how it's going to be going up per year, all using Streamlit, super, super easy. And uh, it's a really awesome tool. And if you have like $100,000 and you get an average return of 7% for uh, 30 years, you made quite a lot of money. So this is a, just a fantastic data analysis dashboard tool, Streamlit. Definitely give it a try if you're needed to create these kind of UIs. And I will see you in the next video.